Hey, what's going on, Sec Plus Preppers? I'm Colin Weaver, and this is IT Dojo's Security Plus Questions of the Day, where each and every day I'm gonna give you two Security Plus preparation questions to, to ponder and think about. So, let's get right to it. Question number one. Sitting at your desk, phone rings, user calls and says that they're at their computer, at the office, trying to access their church's website, and they're, all they're seeing is a page that says, web page blocked, nothing else. So uh, they then proceed to report to you that using their tablet computer, they can go in and access the website. Um, of the answer choices that you see right here, which of them is most likely to be the issue? Go ahead and click pause, give us some pondering, and then we'll talk it through. Okay, the first option there says that uh, there's something wrong with the user's MAC address table and that it needs to be flushed. Uh, that is highly unlikely to be the answer here. Uh, some kind of an error or you know, incorrect mapping in the MAC address table is going to cause the user to not be able to communicate with a particular destination at all. It's not going to cause them to see a message on the screen that says web page blocked. Choice number two says that the uh, internal DNS server at the company is unable to resolve the church's website. Um, if that was the case, then you would be getting just some sort of a timeout message or not, being, not seeing anything at all. The fact, again, that we're seeing web page blocked as a message uh, I mean, that message is coming from somewhere and DNS failing to resolve isn't going to produce that particular error. The third option says that a policy mandated URL filter is preventing the user from being able to go in and access the website. That is almost certainly what's going on here. Um, when you have a URL filter in place like that, it identifies the site uh, by its content, going into saying that it's an adult site or a gambling site or a sports site or a social networking site or something like that. And then uh, based upon that URL prevents them from being able to, to access that site and instead redirects them to uh, a, a predefined page. Now, normally that page would say something more descriptive than just web page blocked. It should go in and say, you know, that, that, the, that the content was blocked and it was blocked because of policy and maybe offer a link to a policy page or something more descriptive to give the user better information. But, um, but that's almost certainly what's going on here. The fourth option says that the website is down and that the user's just seeing a cache copy on their on their tablet. Uh, probably not. Again, if the website is down, you're not going to see anything on your on your in your web browser, you know, other than a timeout, you know, kind of generic error message that may vary depending upon the, the browser that you're using. Uh, but the fact again that it says website is blocked is or again or web page is blocked is a specific message coming from somewhere. Um, so that's that's not likely to be the issue. And the fact that they're seeing the content on their on their tablet. Again, it could be a locally cached copy, but again, that, that's not the first thing that should jump to mind in terms of that particular situation. And then the very last option on there says that the church has actually blocked all incoming HTTP requests from your company. While technically that's possible, uh, I doubt that's really what's going on here. So again, this is one of those things where when you're looking at a question, you could go in and say, well, two of these are, are plausible answers. But as is always the case when you're doing you know, certification testing and things like that, they're asking you what is the best answer. And given the choices here, the best answer is that you got some URL filtering going. Okay, question number two. Question number two says that you have two DNS servers in your network and they are configured in a primary secondary configuration, which means that the secondary is going to be pulling the zone configuration file information from the primary uh, in a process called zone transfer. Now your DNS servers are not on the same IP subnet, so this zone transfer is going to be going through a router and in this example or in the question we say that the router has an access control list configured on it. So uh, that means that there's going to have to be specific rules that are going to enable this traffic to flow. So given these answer choices, which of the following is the most appropriate thing for you to do to make sure that zone transfers are going to work between these two DNS servers? So go ahead and give those a read, click pause, and then when you're ready uh, and you think you got the answer, click play again and we'll talk it through. Okay, the first choice there says make sure that um, all IP packets that have uh, uh, protocol ID number 17 enabled to allow it to be p passed between the two devices? Uh, no. Um, protocol ID 17 would be all UDP packets and uh, following basic ideas of least privilege, we don't need all UDP packets in order to be able to allow these zone transfers to take place. Uh, similarly with the second option it says um, go into your IPv6 uh, rule configuration and have your access control list say that uh, anything that has a next header field of 6 should be allowed to pass. Uh, that would actually be inaccurate as well because the next header value would be uh, of six is TCP. 
So the question says nothing about whether or not this DNS server is TCP, or excuse me, is, is uh, IP version four versus IP version six based. So again, we're not gonna read into the question and go in and say that this is gonna be IP version four, IP version six. So neither of those is likely to be the correct answer. The third choice says that you should go in and enable uh, both TCP and UDP from uh, uh, port 88. So UDP port 88 and TCP port 88, uh, that's all well and good, except those two particular ports don't have anything to do with DNS. Uh, uh, TCP and UDP port 88 are associated with Kerberos, not DNS. So that's not the right answer either. Uh, the next option says that you should allow UDP port 53 uh, to and from. Uh, that's not correct because UDP is for name resolution, not for zone transfer. The next option says that you should allow TCP port 53. That's actually correct. Uh, AXFR and IXFR, um, full zone transfers and partial zone transfers, require TCP in order to work. Uh, in fact, you can go read the RFC that talks specifically about that requirement. So if you want zone transfers to work, you need TCP port 53 to be able to successfully pass between the two devices. So you'd want to make sure your access control list on your router included that. The second to last option says that you're going to make sure that multicast DNS is going to work. Uh, no, multicast DNS is all about doing name resolution without DNS. So it's using multicast to resolve the names and services that are available on a network segment. Uh, we're talking specifically about using DNS where we're going to go and query DNS in order to find uh, the, uh, the IP address and you know, match with the particular host name that we're looking for. And then the very last option on there says that you should allow um, all IP packets coming from or going to the respective server's IP addresses. Now, that actually would work if you were to go in and do that. The problem, however, if you stick with the base concepts that work in security of least privilege, least privilege says that you should allow the things that need to um, occur in order to be able to do the work, uh, but nothing more. And going in and allowing all packets to flow in between these two servers is too much. Yes, it would allow for zone transfers to be successful, but it also allows for other stuff that isn't necessary for what these particular servers are doing. So again, sticking with the whole best answer mentality, the best answer is to allow TCP uh, port 53 to be able to pass between these two, two devices, and that's it. So there you have it. First question we had today was going in and talking about basic ideas of URL filtering, where we're able to block content based upon its particular type. And the second question went in and looked at what the uh, necessary ports and protocols were in order to allow for zone transfers between uh, primary and secondary DNS servers to be successful. So I hope you liked those questions. I hope they were good for you. And if you did like them, please give the like button down there a little tickle. I'll appreciate that. If you want to get uh, Security Plus questions every single day, two of them per day as you continue to do your studies, uh, please uh, click on that subscribe button and I'll let you know when they're ready. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.